Welcome back to Research Methods. Today we are looking at session four where we talk about literature referencing. In session three, we talked about literature review. We talked about literature review being about argument, evidence, and illustration. Now we are going to learn how to provide the evidences for the arguments that we put across in our write ups, that are papers and our thesis. So that's what we are going to learn today. Literature review is about argument, evidence, and illustration. So, how do you provide the evidence? That's what we are going to learn today. Okay. Now, so we have got three parts defining referencing, API referencing style, in text, and then API reference style reference list. Now, we are looking at chapter four of our reference of our book. Our reference book is called Research Made Easy. It's on Google Books it can be, and soon will be on iBooks too. Okay. Now, defining literary reference. What is literary referencing? Literary referencing is the act of providing evidence for the arguments and perspectives presented in our literature write-up. That's an article, an essay, or a long essay. These things can be done in two ways. Either provide the references within the text, which is required for every argument that you put across, and then at the end of the day, you compile the reference at the end of the text. This is different from bibliography. Bibliography just is a compilation of text of references that you read, and then those ones you cited in the work. But this list of references, number two, is more focused on the list, the list of references that were cited in the work. So what you cite in the work, within the text, or in, in text, and then what you compile at the end of the text. Now within the text or in text referencing, you see styles like this, Uche 2000, Benson 2003, Kinsin 2000, Mesa et al, Salia 2011. What you see here is that there are some which are the end of the sentences and there are some which are within the sentence. So there are some which are the end of the sentence in the parentheses, or something, some which are within the sentence in the parentheses, or something which are part of the sentence outside the parentheses. So now you read Salia, you don't read the 2011. If it's in the parentheses, you don't read it at all. But if it's outside the references, you need to read it. So you have to keep that in mind. And you see that there's one, some which are et al, means that there are other authors. There are more than two authors, et al, or et al, as some people pronounce it. And this is Wuche 2000, Benson 2003. I remember one of my students was telling me that this is not et al, it's et al. <laughs> and some, some people say, even say et al. So whichever I wanted to say, et al, et al, et al, I just want you to know that it's it shows that there are more than two ref two authors. Then the list of the references can look like this, where you put them in alphabetical order, Boatin, King, and Dickin, and Divorce. That's depending on the references style. It's not always that it's going to be in alphabetical order. So let's try to appreciate what are the different references styles that exist. So now that we know about the referencing list and then the in-text referencing, let's look at the different types of references that exist. There's the Harvard star, which is very popular, and then there's APA star. APA star means American Psychological Association. And then the other styles, the Chicago Manual style, the American Medical Association has their own style. Even linguistics and other ones, all the other key disciplines in science also have their own styles. But let's, for this particular session, we'll be looking at APA style, which is quite dominant in, quite, in a number of universities in Ghana, like uh, University of Ghana taking it as an example. Other universities use Harvard style, but we'll be talking about APA style. If you learn one style, you can be able to apply the understanding to appreciating the rubrics of the other styles and knowing how to be able to put them, use the styles in your long essay or your thesis or write-ups. Now, you can be able to download the Harvard style or the APA style from these quick, tiny URLs. That will give you direct access to those references. So let's see. APA style. What does the APA style in entail? Within the text, we start by looking at quotations. A quotation of usually um, fewer words than 40 words should be integrated into the text. Quotations are sentences that are picked verbatim from a particular person's work, replicated in your work. So you actually pick the words verbatim and you put them in your work. Now, if it is less than 40 words, you want to make sure that you put the quotation marks there. So you have fewer than 40 words, the author name and the year and the page number where it was taken from should be put there. So you have parent um, the page, um, the quotation marks here, quotation marks here. And you have Boateng, comma, 2011, page 9, 59. 
That's what he's telling you here. Now, what you have actually done here is that this whole sentence is picked from Boatin's work. It's not your work. You picked it from Boatin's work. So you have to be quote it and show that it is from Boatin's work. It's not your work. Another thing that you can also have is when you pick from the person's work, but you don't pick the whole uh, sentence. You pick part of the sentence, but it's more than, it's less than 40 words. So it has been argued that now this political instability, poor governance, and lack of foreign direct investment to be that foreign direct investment to be a critical factor influencing unemployment in Egypt. Salia 2011, comma, page, ele page 5. Now, what you see here is that this whole sentence is from Salia, and I've done, we have done it just as is. But it has been argued that. Now, let me point out one thing. Here, um, there's a statement say it has been argued that. So you see that there's some judgment that is being passed on the, argue, the quotation. This one is just picked as is and dropped in the work. I always encourage authors and students that if you are doing your long essay and you're writing up a, a piece of work, try to use this one more than that. This approach allows you to be able to add some judgment or reflect on the work before you put it in. It has been argued that, or or you tend to disagree with this definition of Kwame, which says that, or I agree with this definition, which says that. If you just pick it verbatim, it means that you are not actually adding anything to it. You are not adding any new or uh, any new thing to it, and it shows that the credit is totally for that of what. Now, it's not bad to be for the credit to be of what, but we ask that where are you? Remember that we want to move away from descriptive writing to analytical writing. So, passing judgments on works matter. Being able to identify which arguments are linking with others matter. So we point out that please, when you are picking quotations, pick it in a manner that at the end of the day you are passing some judgment and using the sentences to be able to substantiate or point point the key arguments that you are picking from the person. Don't pick the whole sentence and not just add anything to, to it yourself. Otherwise, if you don't can do that, then paraphrase the whole sentence and use what is relevant from the sentence. Now there are certain times that you may pick more than forty words, especially for a definition. So we ask you that you have to block it. You have to block the writing that is indented in your work. For example, this is more than 40 words, or it's 40 or more words. So you, you indent it, and then a full stop comes, and you put in the reference. So it's kind of a hanging, hanging, within, a hanging paragraph within your work. So you indent it a little bit, and then you, you put the whole sentence there as is expected of you. So you indent it before you put the whole sentence, and you put the whole sentence there. And then you add the reference as is here. The author, the year, and then the page number. If the page is spanning more than one page, it's going to be PP or PGS. 59 hyphen 60. PP or PGS. But if it is just the same page, it's going to, it's going to be P. Okay. Now, sometimes you may also realize that you are picking an article, but it's the same author or they have to share the same surname. So it gets confusing that if you say bought in 2011 and you repeat another bought in 2011, I did the same buttons, especially one is called Sarah Boatin, another is called maybe Shina Boatin, then what, what's the relationship? So you want to separate that one is um, one is one Boatin, which is a different author from the other, or they are different works. It's the same Boatin, um, Boatin Shina, but the one is done in January, one is done in February, or they can all be done the same month, but different articles. So how do you differentiate to let someone know this is article A and article B? The best way to do it is to make sure that the one that you use first has an A and the second one you use has a B. For example, this is from ITU. Statistics from the International Telecommunication Union tend to suggest that mobile phone subscribers currently constitute 60% of the world population. ITU 2008A. In countries like Ghana, it is estimated that there are 50 mobile phone subscriptions per 100 inhabitants. Further, the ratio of mobile cellular subscriptions to fixed lines is 80 to 1. ITU 2, 2008B. So this is a different IT report which is focused on Ghana. This is a different IT report which is a global report. The first one has the A, the second one has the B. Irrespective of which of them has a, a first name which is, comes before the other. The first one has the A, the second one has the B. So that when you go to a list of references, everybody can see there's a difference between ITUA and ITUB. 
otherwise everybody would think that it's one itu that you are referring to and that can also lead to plagiarism me you see plagiarism comes when you don't cite appropriately or you don't cite at all you you pick the work and put it verbatim in your somebody's work you put it verbatim in your work and means that you are saying that work belongs to you but it doesn't belong to you you are plagiarized second you put it pick the person's work you put it in your work and you don't cite appropriately so we can't find the work so that's also a form of a plagiarism or third you cite appropriately by par instead of paraph paraphrasing the words you actually use the words and just change is and off to look like it's yours but it's actually the same sentence is what is still there that's also a form of plagiarism you have to be able to re reduce the degree at which it looks like the old one in fact with some some universities say that it should be between 14 to about less than 40 percent other universities have got maybe between 14 to 30 percent looking like the old one you picked up I hope you understand that's entirely when we look at how much you have cited from everybody the whole world should be between 13 to the uh, less than 40 percent if you are getting more about if in some investors even to go less 13 to 30 percent if you go beyond 30 percent you think you are plagiarized too much okay the degree of similarity with other people's works now what about if the person is quoting from somebody but you have not read the person's work and you also want to quote for example Boatin and Boatin 2008 wrote a work but I didn't read it. I read Abbott's work, 2011. So how do I quote it? So I want to say that the nature of business activities, I'm quoting from um, that of Abbott, because I didn't read Boatin's work. But Abbott quoted Boatin and Boatin. So what I will say is that Boatin and Boatin, 2008, quoted in Abbott, 2011, 2012, page 11. So the page number here is refers to that of Abbott's work because that is the one I read and Boatin and Boatin is the author that I am quoting work I'm quoting but I'm quoting it from Abbott's work so that because I didn't read it I need to quote it from Abbott's work so that in case there's anything wrong with the sentence construction nobody will blame you they'll blame Abbott because I did, but if you go straight to go and quote what and what you are lending on the understanding, lending off the understanding that you read it. So, if there's any problem, we should hold you responsible. That is why you have to be very careful that if you are picking a secondary source, that means that you didn't read it and somebody read it. Your primary source is the one you read, but the secondary source is somebody who's read it and you are picking from that person's own. Then you have to be careful that you quote it as the person wrote it there, also quote it in, quote it in his work. Now, sometimes you may not quote, but you may paraphrase. So it becomes Boatin and Boatin cited in about 2012. Means I didn't quote it. He picked the idea from the idea belongs to Boatin, but I didn't read it. I read Abbott's own. Now, we don't expect you to be doing too much of this in your work. But did you say that? Ah, so you didn't read anybody's work. You always read somebody's work, and somebody reads somebody's work for you. It's not too good. Because that doesn't show that you are doing the literature review yourself. You are letting somebody do the review for you to go and pick. I hope you understand me. So try as much, much, much as possible to use this sparingly in the work. What if you have multiple authors? What do you do? Multiple authors, then use the ampersand sign. Jackson and Gallus is on your computer. The ampersand sign is this one. Jackson and Gallus or Jackson, Jackson and Gallus here. Jackson and Gallus here again. So Jackson and Gallus have... have discard that a reform is needed some authors have argued for a reform so you can use that one to be able to get your work done that's in colors so for publications with multiple authors which are referred to several times you can use jackson and gallus but what if there are three or more authors now if there are three or more authors like jackson gallus and menza the first time you you find the authors you should write jackson gallus and menza write all the authors first names the second time you are using it, you write Jackson et al. That's how the APA does it. Jackson et al. Here, the second time you are using it. the first time you write all of them. The second time you write Jackson et al. Okay, so let's look at this example. The findings show that in rural context, women are more likely to share mobile phones than men. 
women in rural countries intimated that they do not share mobile phones unless in the case of emergency jackson and gales jackson gales and men's are the first time so it continues on both men and women in urban contests tend to share similar perspectives as men in rural contests pal in 2007. it suggests that shared access among micro enterprises is more likely to prevalent in contests where situations or situations where physical economic barriers access barriers are a concern jackson and al so now you see the second time now what you didn't see is that the first one was jackson and gales and means and then the next sentence i bring jackson again always it doesn't it's not good it's good it's always important that for every 50 words you have at least one reference and if if possible don't be repeating the references closely to each other it doesn't show that you are reading it means that you are actually picking all from only one person so because i was going to use jackson again i had to bring in another author palin before i bring in jackson now this does not matter even if th this does not affect the et al what it means is that whenever you are using a reference you are going to use subsequently make sure that you bring in another reference before you bring it again that's what i'm trying to say but whatever it is whenever you 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 have multiple authors the first time you use you have to bring the all the authors uh, names the second time you use the et al okay now Sometimes you reference there's no author. If there's no author, we keep the title just as the title and we'll put the year there. Like corrupt cor corporate social responsibility reportage on bank websites in Ghana, 2010. Just like that. Or the United Nations 1948. Or according to the WHO or the World Health Organization 2009 report on health education. So we focus on the institution. If there's no author, we can also focus on the institution. I will encourage you to focus more on the institution if where possible or the title of the article where is worst case scenario but try as much as possible that it does, this doesn't happen often because i told you that literature review should use available resources so make sure that the available resource has some appropriate person who wrote it find out who wrote it don't just be picking articles that have no authors sometimes it can be an institution that owns it Okay. what about referencing list what would you do the referencing list is what you produce at the end of your article so this should be arranged alphabetical order and use ampersand before the last author if there are two to seven authors so that means that the ampersand is also used here use italics for titles of journals and volume numbers as well as book titles use indent for second and subsequent lines in the reference and start a reference on a new a reference list on a new page very, very important our reference list should be on a new page for ap style so i'm going to show you how it looks like the first thing is how do you reference a book the same name of the author and the initials the year and the book title should be in italics and the edition if available the place the city in which it was published and the name of the publisher so milgram p the same name and then the initials and then Rob and ampersand will come Roberts this MJ 2002 full stop economics organization management full stop edition second edition Englewood Cliffs New Jersey Prentice Hall so you have it there so use italics for the journals and volume numbers as well as book titles I use indent so the second sentence is indented I hope you've seen that that's one style about one thing you see about APA style now the next one is that what about a, a book that has chapters in them so you have said name of the lead author initials the title of the chapter and then in initials of the same name of the editor and um, the editor book title in italic, italics and then a place and a publisher so Biesia and timaras and then you have 1994 and they wrote a chapter called pharmacology and drug management in the elderly in timara's own book timara's wrote a book the book himself he's the editor if it was two authors who wrote the book it would be eds it's one editor so author so it's ed physiological basis of aging and um is it Gerat geratrix uh, then you have second edition pp 279 that's the page numbers i remember i told you that the page numbers are spanning pp 279 to 284 book book Raton is the place and then crc press is the publisher i hope you understand what i'm trying to say so 
the indents will also take place. Here, the italics is on the title of the book, just as we said. But this is the chapter title, and this is another book. So you write, here you swap it. The initials will come before the, the surname. But in the beginning, it was the, the surname before the initials. I hope you understand me. Now, so when you finish that one, then you have another one, general articles. The general articles has to do with the surname of um, the lead author and initials, surname of other authors, that if there are other authors, initials, title of the article, title of the journal art in italics, and volume in italics, and then page. So then come our what's in our mobile phones and financial services in developing countries, a review of concepts, methods, issues, evidence, and future research directions. Full stop. Third World Quarterly is the name of the journal in italics. Then the general volume number in italics, and then the issue will be in parentheses. Then the page number is no PP. So you have to know the template and know how to fit in your points. Okay. APA style reference, a list of references. Name, initials, year, and date. Style of title of the article, title of the newspaper in italics. So what do you have? Appear, comma, S. This has been an exam question before. 2014 is the year in which the article was published. First February is the date in which the, that newspaper was published. Rose Plantain Business Tribes is the title of the article. And Daily Graphic is the name of the newspaper, page 11. Sometimes some people may be forced to add the, um, the in case the article is from the economic section of the daily graphic. They write Rose Plantain Tribes, comma, and they write economic section before they write daily graphic. But this is how it is done. Rose Plantain Business Tribes, real daily graphic, P P 11, page 11. Then we can continue again. We have web page. Web page has to do with going to a website and picking an article from there. So the name of the author, initials, year, title in italics, retrieve date, and, and then from URL. So CRT Jane, 2013, the business case for building real relationship with customers, retrieved. You see, the name of the institution is not put there, but retrieved 23rd June, 2013 from this page. Sometimes people put their name on the institution here just before they retrieved. But you have to be consistent. What style you are using? Okay, now if there are no authors, that means that the title of the article will come, 2013 will come, then retrieved will come. So that's very simple. You just drop the authors. When you finish, you put them together like this with each of the second sentences indented. So what is on the side here will just be the names of the the starting, the first line of the reference. This one is only one line, so there's no indent. And it's arranged alphabetical order. So this is how you reference using the APA style. You can go to YouTube and just Google using um, Word to reference. And you can see how you can use it to, with Microsoft Word to do this, generate the references automatically for you. It's very simple. Maybe we'll do the illustration later. But that's something that you can learn straight through YouTube. There's several, several examples for you to do that. So Harvard style is here and APA style is there. Okay, so that's a list of references. The next thing that we'll be talking about, I know you have a question, but let me, the next section we'll be talking about how to be able to handle theories in research and what the relevance of theories in research. Okay, what question do you have? So I have um, about three questions. The first one has to do with the, um, when you are quoting, Maybe a definition from someone. So we should indent the definition. That we should indent it. I'm asking if it should be the same font size, the same spacing, and those things. And then with the ampersand, um, I'm not so much clear with that. If it's part of the sentence, should we use the ampersand, or can we even use the the word itself? Maybe a and d. And then the third one. You said we should use the upper side if there are two or I mean two between two to seven authors. So what if there are more than seven? And then the last one, which is the clarification, 
um, with the P and then the PP. Um, if it's a book, should we use P, uh, I mean the P and the PP, or if it's an article? Those are my questions. I'll take them one by one. The P and the PP is just for pages. PP is just for page, more than one page. So anytime you see more than one page, you use PP. Now, when you are providing your list of references and you have two to seven authors, you can use the ampersand sign. When there are more authors, after the, after the last seventh author, you can write at R. That's if you are doing list of references. And then the ampersand sign is usage in the main body of the work. You use the ampersand sign whether it's within the center or outside the centers. The ampersand sign is just combining two or more authors together, their names to their surnames names together. We don't use end at all anywhere. End is used in Harvard style, but not in um, APA style. And then you ask the question on um, indenting. Indenting, yes, you indent. It's the same font. Everything is the same font, and everything is the same size, and the spacing is the same size, just as it's expected of you in the main work. So thank you, and we'll meet you next time.